So this is what I was a little afraid of. I know it's only mid-October, getting towards the end of October, but she is starting to lose interest in food. I never saw her come out of her burrow. I actually just disturbed her and brought her out. But this has been feeding lately. We're getting a little bit more touch and go with whether she's going to wake up and really be interested in eating on any given particular day. And I'll give her just a little bit more time to maybe decide if she wants to eat this. Otherwise, I'll cover it with tinfoil and give her another chance tomorrow because she is not looking interested and I am also burning daylight. I'm getting a lot of glare because the sun is low in the sky and this month my patrons voted for me to go out motorcycle herping so I'm gonna hit the road and see if we can find any reptiles also going out and hitting the road. Oh, don't be hissy just because you're sleepy. You might be worried about her hissing and me bringing my hand next to her while putting the, the this means food laser so close to my hand, but I'm not actually concerned about her biting me. I am very much ready for a tail whip to come any second now. It's kind of what her body's posturing for. But those tongue flicks are slowing down and moving in the right direction. Anyway, while Elle decides what she wants to do about tonight's dinner, I'll fill you in on the rest of the plan for this video. Because it's not a guarantee that we are going to find something out on the road tonight, especially with weather getting colder and bringing these reptiles closer and closer to brumation, I want to make sure that this road cruising is worth watching whether I find something or not. And I say whether I find something because there is always the possibility that I'm going to drive right past something that you will notice in the footage. So definitely let me know in the comments if I missed out on any killer finds. But getting back on track, just in case I don't find any reptiles to share with you tonight, I did want to at least share the new information I found this week about how rattlesnakes are able to deliver their venom even while their new fangs are developing. Think about it, if a rattlesnake has a venom gland and a duct that carries venom from that gland to the fang, but they constantly lose fangs and regrow new fangs, at what point does that duct disconnect from the old fang and attach to the new fang? This week I kind of publicly wondered that question on one of my Instagram Reels posts and a wild Hanbury appeared to answer that question for me and he was kind enough to link a paper where some recent research found out exactly how it is that front fanged snakes are able to replace their fangs and still be capable of delivering venom through that entire process. So if going road cruising on a motorcycle and learning what I learned about rattlesnakes this week sounds interesting to you, make sure to hit the like button and get ready to come along because it looks like Elle is falling asleep, which means she is done eating and it is time to get herpin'. All right, Elle, you're out of time. I'm ready to go herpin'. So this will be for tomorrow and I'll get you out of there if you'll let me and bring you back home to your enclosure that I'm pretty sure is where you want to be right now anyway. All right, Elle, let's go. So with Elle's meal over with, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the road and see what reptiles we can find, hopefully also hitting the road. And here we go. It is a beautiful night. It is about 82 degrees, but the temperature is dropping fast. Hopefully not so fast that it just freezes the reptiles where they are, but that is what we are out here to find. So I'm keeping my eyes peeled on the edges of the road. And of course in the road, I definitely don't want to run anything over. Now I'm really getting out of town. Unfortunately, this road is way too fast moving for me to have any chance of seeing a reptile crossing the road, let alone having a chance to safely stop and really get up close and appreciate a reptile I might find. So I'm really not sure where I'm heading yet other than out of town, I'm passing the river now. And then I'm gonna just keep my eyes peeled for a turnoff for a section of road that isn't going to be moving as fast and hopefully won't have as much traffic on it because it doesn't do me any good to find reptiles on the road if somebody's good year already found it. And here we are, I've found an exit that I wanted to take and we're gonna see if I can find a less trafficked section of road here.
And as you can see here, I'm still getting past going the speed limit while I'm trying to keep my eye on the shoulder for any reptiles. So this isn't quite an ideal road yet, but we're getting closer to something that resembles a viable herping location. It is a gorgeous sunset tonight, but the traffic just doesn't stop. This is still way too many other cars on the road for me to have much chance of finding something. So while I work on getting to a good herpin location, here is the video from this week that brought to my attention that spot, my western diamondback, instead of having the normal two fangs that you think of with venomous snakes, currently has four fangs. And that spurred the question in my mind of, are all four of those fangs functional right now? The feeding started like any other rattlesnake feeding. He was a little timid at first, but eventually struck and took his prey. And I would have had no way of knowing that he was actually packing some extra fangs right now if it weren't for watching his fang sheaths while he started stretching his jaw at the end of the meal. If you have watched this channel for a while, you have seen me pull fangs out of rattlesnake poop, but before they fall out and usually end up getting swallowed by the snake, if you watch the fang sheath, you will actually notice a little crescent right behind the front fang and that is the new fang that's growing in to take the place of the current fang when it falls out. You might also notice that the new fang that sits just behind the old fang seems to come back up to the same anchor point at the base of the fang, which led me to think that perhaps when the rattlesnake finally strikes something and the old tooth falls out, it severs the connection between the venom duct and that fang, and then that venom duct would reattach somehow to the new fang that had been developing the whole time. That was kind of my guess on how it might work, but I really wasn't sure. I often like to stress on this channel that I have worked with reptiles for a long time, but I am no expert. I'm just somebody who has, at this point, spent over 10 years of my life working with reptiles and have accumulated some knowledge. But there is still so much more for me to learn. And it's also why I'm really happy I didn't keep this question to myself this week, because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, a wild Hanbury appeared to answer my question with this awesome research paper from 2021. And long story short, researchers were able to get their hands on eight frozen specimens of various venomous snakes, the families Viperidae, Attractaspidae, and Elapidae. They then decapitated all of the specimens and left their heads soaking in a special stain that would allow researchers to examine the very small internal structures that make up the venom delivery system. And for anybody curious about how exactly that works, here's one of the figures from the original paper. And I have linked to that paper in the description of this video for anybody who wants to read further into how this study was conducted and the findings of the study. But anyway, once the specimens had been stained, researchers were able to take micro CT scans of the specimens and then use software to compile the scans into 3D images of how these snake venom delivery systems work. My guess was most similar to what these researchers termed hypothesis B, shown in this figure here where the venom duct becomes dislocated from the original fang and then reattaches to the new fang as it grows in. But spoiler alert, as you can see from these diagrams derived from imaging the snake's venom delivery systems, hypothesis C was actually the correct mechanism for how venomous snakes keep their fangs locked and loaded. These scans revealed that once a new fang ankylos ankylosed, when the new fangs start to form, the venom duct bifurcates, which basically means splits into two, and forks in a new direction connecting to both fangs at the same time. Which answers my original question of whether or not in this video Spot had four functioning fangs. And the answer was yes. And if you're like me, now you might be wondering, does that mean if I were to get bitten by Spot while he has his replacement fangs raring and ready to go, would that bite from a rattlesnake with four functioning fangs be more severe than a bite from a rattlesnake with only two fangs? Obviously, one of the advantages of a bifurcating venom duck is that while the snake is replacing his fangs, both fangs have their own dedicated supply of venom. This ensures that if the snake somehow loses one of its fangs prematurely, that as long as the new fang has started to form, it will have already connected to a new venom duct, allowing the snakes to still envenomate their prey. But I would be very interested in finding out if during this period when snakes have up to four functioning fangs, if they are any more effective at delivering their venom. This question gets into things like how much venom can travel through one fang and how that venom is then dispersed into the prey or whatever animal they bite themselves in defense from. My gut kind of tells me that a bite would be more severe right now and just kind of on surface level makes sense that if there's twice as many fangs, you can get twice as much venom injected in the same amount of time. And having the multiple entry points of the fangs into the prey may even help disperse that venom faster. 
But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Or better yet, if somebody already knows of research that has been done into this subject, let me know down in the comments. And who knows, maybe that will be what I talk about next time I go out herping. Speaking of which, I'm doing some backtracking now. The area that I was in was very beautiful, and I would love to go back with a permit so I can get off my bike and do some herping on foot but I didn't have a permit to be in any of the established recreation areas today. And right about the time the traffic got light enough that I could potentially find reptiles on the road, there were signs every 15 feet on either side of the road warning you that you would be shot on sight if you parked your car there. All right, maybe not shot on sight, but either way, I didn't have money for a ticket, so I did some backtracking and I'm looking for another nice slow road that it won't be illegal to pull over on. This one was looking kind of promising, but I didn't like that it was a dirt road, one, because it makes my bike a little bit more squirrely to control on, not that that's a big deal, but it also means that I'm missing out on the factor of the blacktop being a warm surface that radiates out heat for reptiles and kind of entices them to come up and sit on the surface. So I decided to do a little bit more backtracking and try to find a road similar to this, but with some actual pavement on it. And here we go. This is looking promising. We got pavement. It's real quiet and slow back here. People driving around on golf carts. Only drawback here is there's some ranch property around here, which means I may actually be at risk of getting shot if I step on the wrong property now. But this video is for my patrons, and you guys are worth it. And speaking of my patrons, I would like to thank all of my supporters over on Patreon who voted for this month's video topic, starting with my head herpers, Allie Ward, Amanda Lynn, Deborah Torgerson, Jane Cabin Girl, JCH, Lindsay Justice, Loki and Thor, Sierra Sicard, Tiffany H, and Travis Lawson. Thank you so much for your ongoing support of the channel. It really helps me keep these videos coming. And if you're not a patron member, thank you for just tuning in to this week's video anyway. It really means a lot to me that you are here. I know there are plenty of other reptile channels and plenty of other things you could be doing with your time. And I think it is really cool that so many of you choose to spend some of that time with me learning about snakes and appreciating all things reptile related. So thank you once more to my head herpers, the viewers of this channel, and the members of my other patron tiers whose names are scrolling up your screen now. If you'd like to join them in supporting this channel and immortalize yourself by getting your name in the end credits of my full videos, you can do so for as little as $3 a month, which will also buy you access to early and ad-free content on Patreon, as well as exclusive voting rights for one video topic per month. That is what this video was, so this video very well may not exist if it weren't for my patrons. So thank you again to all of my patrons, past, present, and future, and of course to anybody else who is still watching the video. You know, as, as, as long as you remember to leave a like. You gotta remember the like, that's, that's, uh, that's important. Anyway, here's where I should probably come clean and let you know that I don't find any reptiles road cruising in this video, at least none that I saw. Again, if you notice something on the road that looks like a snake, let me know the timestamp and the area to look in so I can know what I might have missed out on. And with that, I think that is all I've got for this week's video, so I'm going to shut up and let you enjoy the last of this road cruising sunset. Anyway, thank you again for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed road cruising with me and learning about how venomous snakes deliver venom through their newly formed fangs. I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you find tons of reptiles doing some late season road cruising. But most of all, I hope that you just keep herping.